Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here, and in this tutorial we'll be talking about the Star Wars light speed effect. So I'll show you um, how to kind of start this for the newer look, as well as kind of this old school uh, traditional Star Wars light speed effect right here. So I'm going to be using trap code particular in uh, Adobe After Effects here. So the way we use this is by creating a solid and applying trap code particular. Now one of the newer features in particular is this emitter behavior where we can set this to explode. This basically emits particles on the endpoint of the layer and then immediately goes to zero particles per second. Now what this does for us is allow us to basically set up a burst of particles and uh, not have to deal with keyframing it. And this will actually be, become pretty useful for us uh, as we move forward. So let me set this to 50,000 particles per second. Uh, just for now. And then what I'm going to do is zero out the velocity and I'll go to the emitter type and set this to a box. So what we want to do is basically create a burst of particles in a very large area. That's basically space, you know, space is pretty big. So we want this emitter size to be really big. So I'm going to turn up the emitter size X and the emitter size Y. And the emitter size Z we'll come back to, but we're not going to make this as big as you might think. You know, if you think in space, we might want to like crank this up so that's, you know, huge and lots of stars everywhere. Oops, I don't have a camera. So I'm going to go to layer new camera so I can move my camera around and we can move through space. This is essentially what we're doing or what we're trying to simulate. But to get the effect, at least in terms of how it would have been or looking like it would have been done in a 1970s sort of photographic special effect. This would have been more of a, a, a flat projection, or not a projection, but a flat matte painting. So we don't want a whole lot of Z space in here. I'm gonna keep this around 2000. So as we zoom forward, we kind of have a uh, semi two dimensional plane of particles coming at us, but we still have a little bit of variation in size uh, due to their uh, Z depth. So we'll come back to this, but that's probably pretty close for now. So um, these aren't moving and actually they disappear right at about four seconds. And that is because, or actually if you've not moved your layer, they'll disappear at, at three seconds. The reason is uh, the particle lifespan defaults to three seconds in length. So I'm gonna turn this up to six seconds just for now. We'll probably come back to that, but six seconds is, is fine. Now, to have these move, what we're going to do is go to the physics section and use wind. And the cool thing about wind is that we can keyframe this over time. So if I'd like these to sit still and uh, eventually start to move either towards the camera or away from the camera, I can keyframe this wind. So for the more uh, old school effect, I'll set uh, a keyframe for uh, the wind to be zero. And then if I turn this up to a positive direction, this will move away from the camera. If I set it to a negative direction, it'll move towards the camera. So I'll set this to negative, uh, negative 1,000. And this is gonna give us the kind of old school Star Wars look where we're sitting, uh, staring at the star field or maybe, maybe moving very slowly through it. Ten barely looks like it's moving. Let's try 50. Oops, I need a negative value. It's negative, let's try negative 50. So I'll keep that really low and maybe negative 10 is, is just fine. So we just need like a little bit of movement so that we're kind of moving through the stars and then we quickly jump or accelerate to light speed and the stars move a lot more quickly. Hopefully we don't fly through a star like that. Now, if that does happen, what we can do, the easiest thing to do is go back to the emitter under random seed and try some different settings here so we're not actually flying through any stars, which we don't wanna do. There we go. So to turn these into streaks, what we're gonna do is use the aux system of trap code particular. Now, particular, emits particles, right? Each of these points, it creates points in space and then renders uh, by default. We're using a, a sphere, a little sphere in that space. The aux system of the, of the plugin turns each of those points into particle emitters. So if I go to the aux system, turn on the aux system by setting this to continuously, we're gonna, we're gonna start emitting particles from those main particles. Now, what this is gonna look like at first is 
well, we're going to see some colorful particles kind of overlaid on top. And as these start to move, you'll start to see a little bit of that trail behind the, the particles. Let's zoom in to get a little better view here. Uh, not the right color and definitely not as much uh, of a, a line that we'd like this to be. So what we need to do is have more particles per second emitting behind this particle. And that's easy. We can just go here to the particles per second of the aux system, turn this up, and this is basically going to fill that line up. Now, good practice is to have this particle count as high as you need it, but as low as possible. The reason is, or there's actually two reasons. One is if we really kind of overload this and we have so many particles laying on top of each other, well, for one, it's going to take it much longer to render. And the other reason is that once we start overlapping, uh, objects that have anti-aliasing on them, you're going to notice that the edges are going to start to go jagged because all of those alpha channels are adding with each other and it starts to look a little unclean, a little aliased. So we want to keep that just as high as we want, but as low as possible. So I'm going to leave that at 200. That seems probably pretty good. Obviously the color map needs a little tweaking. So there's two things we can do. We can go to the uh, color over life of the aux system. Make sure you're not in the particle section, but in the aux system. So color over life is where this color map is coming from. I can randomize it or pick one of the presets over here. But actually what I'm going to do is go to color uh, from main. Oops, let's close that out. Color from main. So if I turn that to 100%, all of the aux particles are going to inherit the color from the main particle. That main particle is up here. So that's this particle section right here. So you notice this is set to a white color. I'm going to set this to a little bit blue because I've always noticed that par or stars in the Star Wars universe tend to run just a touch blue. However, when they sit still, they're generally not blue. So when they're sitting and all those aux particles are overlapping on each other, uh, I'm going to go to the aux system again and set the blend mode to either screen or add. I'll set this to I'll set this to screen for now. Now I think the particles themselves are a little bit big, so I'm going to go to the particle size here under the aux system. Set this to let's say 3. And what you can see now is that I've got my main particle. You can see that sort of blue one here at the at the very tip, and then the aux particles are drawing behind it. Technically speaking, we don't really need that main particle. It's just there to draw on the aux particles. So I can actually turn that size all the way to zero so we don't see it, but it, it is still very much being calculated in terms of its uh, position in space. We just don't see it. It's not rendering that point in space, or it's not rendering an image at that point in space. So now we've got our aux particles. So we've got sort of our cluster of stars like this. And then as the wind kicks in, it starts to blow those particles towards the camera and the aux system is continuously drawing particles. And then we have these light streaks happening just like so. So the way we've set this up is pretty flexible at this point. If we want more stars in there, we can go back to the emitter and turn this up to let's say I don't know, 90,000. So we'll have more main particles being generated. And then each of those main particles is drawing on a streak in space uh, because it's uh, drawing particles with the aux system. Now, just to show you how to tweak things, the, the length of that tail, if you'd like this to be a little bit longer, that's going to be determined by the lifespan of the aux system particles. So Ox particles don't live very long. They're continuously being emitted by these main particles and they last a half a second and then they die. So that's where the, the trail ends here. So if I turn this up, let's say to, oh, not one and a half seconds, but let's say about one second, you'll notice that the, the trail itself starts to get a lot longer. So you can tweak that lifespan to you know, however you'd like your particles to look, but I think we're doing pretty well. So from here, I want to animate the camera and move it forward in space. Now I need to do a pretty big move and you have to be careful when we're doing moves like this. By default, After Effects creates what it calls a two node camera. So it has position as well as a point of interest. Now if I animate just the position, it's possible to have the camera 
flip over backwards on itself because the point of interest is staying the same. And as the position moves beyond the point of interest, it'll flip from one direction to the other. So it's just one of those things you got to keep in mind. There's a few different ways to get around this. The simplest way is to simply turn this into a one node camera and then we don't have uh, we don't have a point of interest to deal with. Another common thing to do is to simply create a null object that is a 3D object and then parent the camera to the null and then move the null. This way this will move both the point of interest and position at the same time. I'm going to just take this null object and take my best guess. I'm going to move this, let's say, to 2000 pixels, pretty close, 2500. We just kind of want to clear those stars just clear them. We don't want to shoot super far in space, just so that they clear. Now, what is the jump to light speed? Is it a very gradual one? Do we ease out of it? Is it a linear transition? I'm not quite sure. I'm going to uh, hit F9 on that. And actually, you know what I should do? What we should do here is separate the dimensions of our X, Y, and Z axes. So we can kind of tweak this curve a little bit. So I don't want it uh, to completely fade out. Let's just kind of have it do a slightly adjusted curve like that. So let's do a quick preview here. Let B and N to set a short little range here for us. So if you compare this to the originals, the original movies have a pretty dense star field in here. So we might not even have enough particles at this point. So we could set this to in the you know hundreds that somewhere between 100 and 200,000, but uh, that's pretty close for now. So this is the original kind of effect. Now in the newer movies, we actually get a sneak preview in terms of what it looks like looking at this from the other side. So to start this effect, instead of having it move toward the camera, we're actually generating the effect of what the camera looks like staring outside a, well, in this case, the Millennium Falcon, and what it looks like sort of trailing it or uh, w flying along with it through the jump to light speed from a reverse angle. So the simple start here, the starting point, is to take this wind. Instead of setting it to a negative direction, we're going to set it to a positive direction. We'll have the effect of jumping into light speed from an alternate angle. Also, I want to zero out to this wind from the beginning or or at least set it to a very low value. So that's kind of our starting point for this effect. This one gets a lot more complicated, so we'll tackle this in another tutorial, because from here we need to make this super dense, almost to the point where it starts to turn white, and then we can transition from this burst of white into a tunnel with a sort of fractal noise texture. So we'll cover that in the next lesson. See you next time.